Hey folks, thanks for checking back on this channel. You check back at the right time because I just got this nice toy. I was recently at the Tesla Fest in Ohio and met a guy there that had one of these. This is a radio frequency spectrum analyzer and it can go all the way up to gigahertz range. This particular model goes up to about 800 megahertz. And I turned it on and what you're looking at there is the RF bands. Uh, from radios and other devices in the vicinity. And I bought it from this company, and they have it on their website, RL R &L Electronics, and this device is called a Tani Spectrum Analyzer. Now in today's video, we're gonna use this device to investigate the RF output of a small Tesla coil and see how that compares with the spectrum of radiation that's already out there. So first of all, let's try this Cobra radio. These go around, I, th I think it's around in the hundreds of megahertz range for their transmission frequency. I'm gonna turn it on and let's see where it transmits at. So here it goes. So it looks like it transmits at 462.3 megahertz. So it's right there in the uh, radio frequency range. And um, because I, the radio is so near to the antenna, it suppresses all the other signals and drowns out the device. So all you see is the output from the radio itself. Now, let's explore a Tesla coil with the same device. Here goes. Okay, here's the small Tesla coil, direct ZVS driven coil. You can check my website for how this is made. Here's the output when the gates are supplied with power. It's already oscillating at 253 kilohertz. So the 12 volts to the gates, which is supplied separately, is enough to light up a, a neon bulb and transmit some energy, which you can see on this uh, frequency analyzer. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add power from a variac, which is what we're doing now. We're gonna slowly turn up the power level and see what happens to the spectrum. It's quite sharp at the moment at 253 kilohertz. Now, as we add power, we're gonna slowly increase. See what happens? You get a range of frequencies. And these ramped Tesla coils, which is what this one is, provide a whole spectrum of frequencies. You can see all those, those peaks there, and they're above the starting frequency. You'd expect them to be lower, but they're actually higher. And I've only got it just barely turned up to produce some output. Now we're going to increase the output and see what happens. We're going to push it up a little bit more. Now we've got some decent output. Now look what happens to the range. There's a whole spectrum of frequencies both above and below the starting frequency. The little tab there that you can see with the number one on it is where it started. That's the startup frequency. So there's a bunch of frequencies on either side. We're gonna also check this out, and we're gonna turn it down first and see how the range of frequencies it outputs decreases. Now these are all in the hundreds of kilohertz range that you're looking at here. I'm gonna keep decreasing it, and eventually all you're gonna be left with is the initial starting frequency of 253 kilohertz. So it's going down, the voltages. And see that, that second peak that's there? That's close to what the starting frequency was. I don't think it's exactly the starting frequency, but it's pretty close. It's like 256 kilohertz. We're gonna keep going down. Okay, now we're completely off. Now it's jumped back to the start up frequency that the gates run at. So very interesting how it puts out a whole spectrum of frequencies. Now, let's try DC. We have the switch mode power supply and we're not putting anything in. And what I've done is, see that cursor at the top, that little one tab? That's set so that it won't move. It'll, it'll move down, but as the frequency changes with the DC, the tab is gonna be right on the baseline. You'll be able to see it. So we're gonna add DC in and instead of getting a whole range of frequencies, like we did with the uh, AC input, ramped type output, we're gonna get 
a single frequency. Now look at the base. You can see the uh, you can see the little tab. That's where it started at, and the frequency has actually increased. It's now oscillating about 256 kilohertz, and it started at 253 kilohertz. Now this is what the airwaves look like, scanning from 20 kilohertz to 300 megahertz. Now we turn on the Tesla coil, and this is the kind of radio frequency interference that it produces. It's all very wide bandwidth kind of interference, but it's definitely there. And I think it dies off pretty fast with distance. This is scanning the radio waves between 20 kilohertz and 800 megahertz. Now we're gonna turn on the Tesla coil. Well, as you can see, most of the hash noise from the Tesla coil is below 300 megahertz. And it's not really producing any harmonics that are above that. So you can see, as I move away from the Tesla coil, the intensity of this interference quickly dies off and it's almost zero at around 20 feet. So it does not get very far out of the garage where I'm doing the experiment. And that's why it's unlikely that it's gonna interfere with any local radio stations. The same effect with the startup signal when you just plug in the 12 volt power adapter, you can see how it dies off quickly with distance. Well, that's it, folks. I hope you found this experiment as interesting as I did. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing your comments and suggestions.